getting ready for this fight and in my training I've been working a lot of my judo and been working especially my boxing down there in, in Las Vegas I'm working with um, Bernard Hopkins for his last two fights and uh, Derek Harmon who's another uh, cruiserweight boxer from Las Vegas and uh, I just feel like especially my hand and my stand-up training although uh, I've been incorporating like I said uh, my judo and my sambo techniques which I kind of put on the shelf while I was at military fighting systems we trained everything we always trained nothing special and we're gonna look forward to do what we always do the basic my thoughts on Anderson Silva are Keep your hands up. Make sure your head doesn't get kicked off in the third row. And uh, you know, basically, for me, I'm just going to push the action because uh, as long as my hands are up and I stay close to him, I think he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's an excellent fighter. Everyone that's going to fight tomorrow is a good fighter. But we are all here to just entertain people. My thoughts on Anderson is I don't think anyone's really hit him flush. So... Uh, like I said, he's a talented fighter. He can really do everything standing up, and uh, you have to be really careful with that. But I'm prepared. I don't think a lot of people know what I'm capable of because uh, a lot of times I've been going to my fights uh, on short notice or with injuries, and this is the first time I really feel healthy where I can do a little bit of uh, everything he can do and a lot more as well. I believe that no fighter should be talking before the, the fight is over. Um, I see me coming out ahead, of course, um, but a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure is the way I like to fight. Um, I don't hold back, and you know that. I'm just going to come forward and, uh, and push the pace because I don't get tired, and uh, I like to try and make people melt, and I think he's going to fold. We need to see inside the cage to, and then how things will develop. When we're out here, it's very easy to say, I can, I can say out here that I'm going to KO Mike Tyson. And in, you know, in fact, that may not happen. Cage rage. Anderson Silva, you give me a shot at your title. I appreciate the chance. I don't think it's a wise move for you. I know a lot about you. You don't know a lot about me. We'll see in the ring because whether it be knockout or submission, I know it's going to be my night. Tony, você fala demais. O bicho vai pegar. Rage. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event of the evening! First to enter the cage rage octagon, weighing in at 83.7 kilograms. He has a background in mixed martial arts, and this is his cage rage debut. Representing Las Vegas Fight Club, the challenger, Tony Franklin!
This is a middleweight contest scheduled for three five-minute rounds of action for the Cage Rage Middleweight Championship of the World. With on my left, the challenger, Tony Yeah, Lee Murray showed a lot of guts in doing that. Tony Fricklin coming out, realizing, if he didn't before, that Anderson is a southpaw. Tony, his weapon of choice to open things up would be a straight right. Tony circling away from Anderson's left high kick. Anderson being patient. Just taking his time. See, this is, Fricklin is using a pretty good game plan so far. He hasn't really landed too much other than that, that little clipping low kick. But he's staying away from the power of Anderson. And that would be the straight left hand or the left roundhouse kick. Because he's moving to his left. That's right, the straight right hand, left hook. Good counter to a southpaw, but this is what he's got to work against. So See, that's where Silver's combinations pay off. Yeah, Silver's starting to put on the heat. Oh, good knee. Beautiful knees. And and we were just saying pre-fight, probably the most dangerous knees for a striker out there. Yep, and this is what Tony's got to do. He's got to keep his head up top. Okay, Tony going for a clinch. Tony's got to be careful here. He's keeping his head up nice and high because if his head goes down low, it could eat a knee, but Anderson chopping the body. Yes, with those knees round to the side as well, to the rib cage, varying the knees there. We saw him finish Jorge Rivera nicely from that same position. Oh, Good upper up cut, beautiful leg kick. And Flying it, knee and it landed. It's those leg kicks and a kick to the fight, a knee to the fight that drops Frickland. Silver asserting his world dominance here as champion. Oh, oh and it's elbow. over. It. It's over. Elbow. Superb. This is why this man is middleweight champion of the world. That was unbelievable. We've seen a back knuckle. That was a back elbow, a right back elbow. I have never seen that move yet in cage rage. And you can see everybody's mouth is open as you look around the arena. That's nobody the movie you see in it. movies. Wow. You see that in movies, not in a real fight like that. That was straight out of Ongbok. Unbelievable. Straight out of Ongbok. It was a reverse. He didn't spin. It was not a spinning elbow. This was one Looking of the most at, amazing. Look at this. He throws it from here. Watch this. Oh, oh, what a shot. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, two seconds of round one, we have a winner. And still, the Cage Rage Middleweight Champion of the World, Anderson. Yes.